With no further ado, brothers and sisters, the Deen Show. Allah, there's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. I don't know why I did that. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Let's raise the roof here. Takbir! Now that wasn't a war cry, that was what we were saying in Arabic, God is greater, greater than anything that you can imagine. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. Welcome to the Dean Show, I'm Eddie, your host, and we're in Washington, D.C. That's right, Washington, D.C., we're filming today in front of a live studio audience. Alhamdulillah, all praise to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Now, I mentioned Washington, D.C., so did President Obama get an invitation? Is he here? Huh? Allah gives guidance to who he wills. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, maybe he'll get to see this. So today, my next guest, we're going to be talking about what do you stand for? What do you believe in? What's dictating your life? Are you on the bridge? Are you on the edge? Are you confused? You don't know which way to go? Do you have your ID? It's very important that us, as those who have submitted ourselves to the one God, not to the creation of God, but to the creator of all that exists, we know that this way of life that was sent down by the creator of the heavens and the earth, the way of life that all the messages of God live, they taught people. They brought the same message. It was the same message throughout time to submit your will to the will of the one God. And when you have firm conviction in this, this way of life, that's based on truth, evidences, then you're proud to say, I am one who has submitted to the will of God. I'm a Muslim. But now, you start changing your name from Muhammad to Mo. You see your brother or sister gives you a salam <coughs> and you cover it up, you're, you're, you're nervous to give the peace back, you don't know your ID. You, you don't have confidence in the Muslim ID. You go and you get dropped off to school and then you end up turning the corner and the hijab comes off. You're doing it, why? Not because of Allah, because of your parents. You fast what? Not because you have firm conviction in it, because what? Because you want to lose weight, because your parents are making you do it. You're not firmly convinced, and we are going to be talking with my next guest when we come back on the Dean Show, the importance of knowing with full conviction that this way of life is the truth from the creator of the heavens and earth, so when you finish watching this show, you can be convinced knowing that I'm proud to be a Muslim. I have the Muslim identity. Alhamdulillah, this is something that I stand firm on with my next guest when we come back, Imam Safi Khan on the Dean Show. There will always be someone that will be there to say something negative. But at the same time, there will be someone there to say something positive also. So just hold on to the rope of Allah. Everything in this universe, rely and need Allah. The Quran says, don't kill women, don't kill children, don't kill the old people, don't attack the civilians. This is what the Prophet Muhammad told us. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that the Prophet never ever start a war against anybody. Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you, Imam. Wa alaikum assalam, wa barakatuh. How are you? Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, how are you doing? Alhamdulillah, now we just said something in Arabic, so the not yet Muslims who are out there, they don't have to take an Arabic class. Can you define what you just said? Alhamdulillah, what does this mean? Alhamdulillah means uh, praise and thanks be to Allah. That, uh, 
And now some people, you know, they're, they're under this false impression. You said Allah now, you got to define because again, there's some confusion. They think, what are they praising, a, a moon god? Allah is the proper name of God for us as Muslims. Uh, as a matter of fact, this was a name that was used even by previous generations, even before Islam. Uh, as a matter of fact, to this very day, uh, Christians who speak Arabic, they use the name Allah. For God. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. So we're praising the creator of all that exists, the same God that Jesus worshipped, that Noah worshipped, the God that created the sun and the moon, that one creator, that's the praise, creator that we're praising and thanking. And I thank him that he's given us this opportunity, me and the audience here, that we can benefit from your knowledge. You've been doing this a long time. So you heard me open the show. Mo is going to Mah Muhammad's going to Mo. And Fatima's going to Fisi, and she's making up, you know, taking the hijab off, turning around the corner, not confident in her Muslim identity. The brother also, he's also not confident, doesn't have conf firm conviction. We want the people to be confident to be Muslims. What advice can you give us, Shay? Well, living in the West, it's, uh, it is a big challenge to define yourself as a Muslim. But really, the word itself, when you call yourself a Muslim, what does that mean? And if you look at the definition, that means one who has submitted to Allah, one who has submitted to God. And that's where it really all starts. And the most basic thing for a Muslim is their belief system. So, which, is, which we define in Islam, or which we call in Islam the aqidah, which means your creed and your faith and, and your be whole belief system. So if that is strong, if that is strong in the heart of a Muslim, then a Muslim will not be shy in the way that he or she behaves and the way that he or she conducts himself or herself, no matter where they are. Because they know, first and foremost, that Allah is watching and that they're answerable to Allah. 17 times a day and during the obligatory prayers, a Muslim is saying Surah Al-Fatiha, which is the opening chapter in the Qur'an. And in that, one of the verses says, guide us to the straight path. Guide us to the straight path. So it is a continuous thing on a daily basis where, where not only are we asking Allah to, to uh, guide us, but in, at the same time, we're affirming our worship to Allah. You alone do we worship, and from you do we seek help. So we seek his help to maintain that identity, to submit to him and to continue practicing the way of Islam as, as, as much as we possibly can. Now is it important, do you feel that once a person has firm conviction, because we know that Islam, that submission to the one creator, not to a man, not to a saint, not to a monkey, not to an elephant, not to the sun, not to the moon, but everything that God created is not God. But God is the one that is responsible for maintaining us, giving, in our, giving us the air that we breathe, taking care of the bird in the air, the fish in the sea. When we know that this way of life that we're living is not man-made, it's not an organized religion by man or men, we'll be more confident in it. And does this take a little bit of time to study it? Should every person be dedicating so much time to get this firm conviction by investing the same amount of time you're investing in school to, be, to get that PhD, even to get that GET, GED, you have to study. So should people be studying Islam more to get this firm conviction? Yeah, of course, the, this is one of the basic things about Islam. The very first word of revelation was to read. That was the very first word that was revealed. Islam places a high premium on learning and knowledge. Uh, Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he said that the best of you is the one who learns the Qur'an and then teaches it. Learns the Qur'an and then teaches it. Uh, in one uh, saying of his hadith, he said that uh, seeking knowledge is obligatory in every Muslim man or woman. So it is important for us to learn about Islam, but the more importantly is to practice what you know. As you begin to practice, your identity will begin to show. It will manifest itself. And people will know that you are a Muslim because you carry yourself as a Muslim. You implement 
what you have learned and the knowledge that you have, you begin to practice it. And that's what's going to make, that's what, uh, uh, through that people will know immediately that this is a Muslim. Like when you speak, you speak the truth. You don't lie. When you, when you, greet, uh, when you greet people, you say, Assalamu alaikum, which means may, may Allah's peace be upon you. And you, it's like making a, a prayer for them. Almost in every expression that you make, you use the word of Allah. Like if you say, for example, that I'll meet you tomorrow, or I'll meet you after an hour, you'll say, I'll meet you after an hour, inshallah, if God willing, or if Allah wills. Or if you see something nice, you would say, mashallah, that this is the will of Allah. And, and so on, and almost in every expression that the Muslim uses, they use the name of Allah. Emphasizing the fact that we submit to Allah, and Allah is always on our minds. That's what makes a Muslim different. And that's what gives him or her that ID, that I am a Muslim. I've submitted to God. Now tell us, do you also feel, Shaykh, that knowing the reasons, is it encouraged in Islam to ask questions? The, 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 the parents, should they be instilling in their children as they're growing up, why they're wearing hijab. Not just say, okay, you have to wear this because my parents wore it, my grandparents wore it, which is, this is just part of our culture. So when they're asked at school, why do you wear this? Oh, because my parents make me. Or they know that this is the, 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 the fashion that Allah revealed from the seven heavens. He brought it down in a modest way that a woman dresses to protect herself, that she's identifying as a believing woman. And then knowing the wisdoms behind it and the same reasons why do I pray five times a day are they encouraged to ask so then they're confident to give these answers knowing that there's substance there's meaning behind this it's not just a bunch of rit rituals and rules and now I'm just doing it because my parents did it well when we come to any practice in Islam often even those people who don't practice they criticize that well this may be too tough for me to do or this is, is, looks strange it looks weird and unfortunately, a lot of Muslims who, whose faith is weak, they are affected by that as well. Actually, the bottom line is Islam is all about being grateful to Allah. And that's why when, when for example, at the beginning of the program, when you asked me, how are you doing? I said, Alhamdulillah, meaning that I praise Allah, I thank Allah, I'm grateful to Allah for being here today, for giving me another minute to live, to be able to glorify Allah. So the bottom line really is how grateful we are to Allah. So if we want our children to practice Islam, our, our sisters to wear the hijab, I think the first thing is for everyone to realize, children as well as adults, that Allah has done so much for us, that Allah has given us so much, that Allah's blessings rain down upon us day and night, moment to moment. And if Allah has given us so much, shouldn't we be grateful to Him? And as part of our gratitude, let us do things that are pleasing to Allah, especially those things that Allah has asked us to do. So among those things is wearing the hijab, that Allah has asked us to do this. So certainly, if I understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves me to such a degree that He is so forgiving, that almost any, I can, uh, I do so many things that are wrong, but Allah forgives me, Allah pardons me, Allah gives me another chance, Allah is so merciful. If I understand those things, I begin to understand Allah's love for me. And Allah giving me chances not only in this life, but also in the hereafter. Almost everything that I do, if I, for example, if I do a good deed, it doesn't count once, it counts 10 times, or maybe it may even count 700 times more, or even more than that, depending on my level of sincerity. So with a God of this nature, I would love to do anything that He asked me to do. And hence, if that realization is there, then certainly, uh, I think our sisters, they would wear the hijab willingly, and not, they wouldn't ever feel that they're being forced to wear it. MashaAllah, Shay, we're gonna take a break, and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. He was born about 60 years ago in former Yugoslavia, today is Bosnia. After Second World War, can you imagine today you have one child, you have too much. It's important that we realize that Islam is a gift. So we believe that in the teachings of Jesus, what is left, there is truth in there. 
He is the preserver. But the truth has been mixed up with paganism and with nature worship. And so Islam has given you a pure, straightforward way of approaching monotheism. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Safa. Thank you again for being with us. Now, is it enough that a person just goes and utters, let's say, some words in Arabic, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, and now that person doesn't pray, doesn't fast, Ramadan comes around, and you know, they're at the masjid, and then the rest of the year, they're just like, you know, Allah is most merciful, most kind. He'll understand, I gotta work, I gotta make money, I don't really have time. My boss, if he sees me taking the wudu or putting my face on the ground, I might get fired. I might not get hired if I wear the hijab. Are you firm in your Muslim identity when you're thinking like this? And this is a way to fall back on Allah's mercy, just saying He's, you know, a Rahman, a Rahim, and just continuing life like this, Ramadan, Ramadan, but forgetting about, you know, your 24 7 obligations to Allah, Shaykh? Of course. For us as Muslims, Islam is a complete way of life. Complete. A complete way of life. And it means that in every step of the in every step that we take, every move that we make, everything that we say, it is designed, it is supposed to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why in everything that we do, the first thing we're supposed to do is to have the intention to do it sincerely for Allah. I think as long as that's the case then not only won't we be Ramadan Muslims, we'll be year-round Muslims. And the idea is to, uh, when you practice Islam all the time, that's when your faith within yourself is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. But if you practice it, you know, seasonally, then obviously it's going to be, it's going to be weak. Uh, I, w I would uh, remind you and I remind all of us that Bearing a Muslim identity is such a critical issue, such a crucial issue that you find that heavy efforts are being made to divest the Muslim of his or her identity. For him or her to go away from who, or he, from who he or she is. So it is critical for us not only to educate ourselves but to provide venues where we can begin to practice and so people will become more and more confident that yes, what they're doing is the right thing. Bearing in mind especially that more and more people are beginning to see the wisdom of Islam. And people are beginning to see that yes, Islam makes sense. So this is in itself, inshallah, will begin to give confidence to the Muslims that look, maybe I am on to something, I'm doing the right thing. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Now I can't just go ahead and, and have all the fun and ask all the questions. So. When I'm by myself or when we're with the team in the studio, I get to have all the fun, but I want to get everyone else involved. So if anyone has some questions for the Shay, go ahead. Now is your time to ask. Raise your hand and we can come over and ask you and let you ask some questions. Don't be shy now. Sister, right? Here. Okay, I have a quick question. I wanted to know the difference between a messenger and a prophet. Basically, like, was uh, Gabriel, was he like a messenger? Of course he's a messenger, but I want to know the exact difference between what's a messenger, what's a prophet? There, Thanks. The question is, what is the difference between a messenger and a prophet? Of course, there are many differences, but just to, br to briefly put it, uh, a messenger is one who brings a, a law, and a prophet, basically a messenger is a specialized category of a prophet. So the prophets, they bring the message, but the messengers, they, they're more specialized and they bring the law. I want somebody to ask a question who knows a friend, knows somebody that is struggling with their Muslim identity and you want them to inshallah be able to see this or that person's here, whatever the case. Uh oh, I got to run back there. Ask. Okay, we need some people in the front who's going to ask after this one, so I don't have to exercise here. All right, sister. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My mom, she's a non-Muslim, and I just want to know uh, an advice how I can... Ad uh, I know Islam, the best way to 
give someone a hadayat or a message for Islam is to show by example. But she's in another country. Can you please give me more detailed advice as how I can ad bring her into Islam, inshallah? I think, um, bearing in mind that your mom is in another country, uh, I think the best thing that you could do is, of course, through your conduct, through your character, that you are in touch with her regularly, whether th through, uh, through email or through, uh, through the phone. Uh, and whatever you can do to try to visit her or try to bring her uh, near you. Uh, and then try to uh, uh, be righteous towards her as much as you possibly can, to try to serve her, uh, try to do things for her. Uh, these are some things that would really impress her. And of course, as you begin to uh, attend to her needs and things of this nature, uh, as you begin to have more and more conversations with her, whether through email or uh, on the phone, uh, you can begin to talk to her about Islam and how beautiful Islam is and how it's made an impact in your life and how it can make an impact in her life. MashaAllah. Do we have any not yet Muslims here? Because everyone has the potential to submit to the one God. It's very simple. Ah, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you. How are you? What's your name? Sam. Sam? Yeah. Thank you for being here at the conference. Are you having a good time? Yeah, I'm having a very good time. <laughs> all right, all right. Go ahead and ask the question. Um, my question is mainly, um, can you clarify jihad? It's like, it's like it's been used a lot, and it's kind of like controversial. It's a confusing issue for people who are not in the Muslim faith. So can you just like give some clarification and detail on exactly what that is? Good question, good question. Shay, can you clarify? He wants to know, jihad, holy war. You hear it on the news and people getting scared like the boogeyman's coming. Please, ask our guests, answer our guests' questions about jihad. Okay. Jihad, actually, it comes from the Arabic word jahada, which means to exert yourself, to exert your energy to do something, and to be serious about doing something. So... When people hear the word jihad, which is a noun of the verb jahada, it means to basically exert yourself to do something. And it could be, for, for example, uh, when one goes on a diet and one is trying to avoid various foods, this could be considered a jihad because you're exerting an effort to stay away from certain things. And it, it's a struggle within yourself and so on. Uh, sometimes when you, um, for example, when you, you're studying at, at a university and it takes a lot of effort for you to study and to stay up at night and to, and to, uh, to keep on studying and to make sure that you do well on your exams and you let go of things and you sacrifice things, you don't go to the regular meetings or parties that you're uh, used to going, you, you, your schedule is totally different, it cho totally changes, this is a form of jihad. Jihad, when it comes to Islam, certainly does not mean holy war. Uh, there are many aspects of jihad, many different aspects of jihad. Basically, the issue is to struggle. One of the issues that the, uh, the media concentrates on is that it just means war. War is one of the aspects of jihad. But, again, it's an absolute last resort type thing, and it is to defend oneself and, if necessary, to go on the offense. But it is some, it is, uh, there are like 13, 14 different levels of the struggle that comes. And the first, of course, is to, uh, to have the right belief, to struggle to have the right belief, to, to, to learn, to practice, to be patient, to, uh, uh, to go get over one's desires, and things of this nature. So all these things are involved uh, in what we call jihad. And again, this is a very brief answer. Thank you, mashallah. We're going to take a break. Sam, that was an excellent question. And I want every, this is our VIP guest over here. I want everybody to, to make an effort to, from the brothers to introduce yourself to our special guest, Sam. And we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the $100,000 cars, you see a lot of diamonds, you see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is a life. This is, this is, like, you know, paradise right here on Earth. 
It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. Back here on the Dean Show, Shake, we're running out of time. So if you can now give some closing comments and suggestions for those people out there who agree with what's in their very nature, that I didn't create myself, I didn't just come from nothing. There, there is a God, there is a creator. In Arabic, we call him Allah, the same God that Jesus worshipped, the same God that Abraham, knowing all the messengers of God. Jesus said, worship the Father who art in heaven, and that's what we're doing. Just, just worshiping God, giving God all the rights, making God the center of attention in our lives. People are struggling. They're a little bit nervous. They're, you know, they're, they're scared what you know, he or she or my boss or this person is going to say. They're struggling, but they have it in it, in themselves, but they just need a little bit motivation, a little bit encouragement. Please talk to them, Shay. I think when, when it comes to our relationship with God, again, it goes back to the issue of how grateful we are to Allah, how grateful we are to God. And the more that realization that sin, the more you will begin to practice and the more you will begin to see the wisdom of Islam. Because every, virtually everything that you study about Islam, it makes sense that yes, this is definitely the right thing to do. Now, it is so important for us as Muslims to stand for what is right, to stand up for the truth. And as Muslims, in this world, when people adopt a system that, is, that does not come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they inevitably make mistakes and they hurt other people. The Islamic way is a solution to all the problems that humanity in general faces. Islam being a complete way of life has a solution for everything. For us as Muslim, whether it's Educationally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's politically, whether it is economically, Islam has its uh, body of knowledge that deals with each one of these areas. Now, as we close, one of the most important things for us as Muslims is to understand that the Muslim identity is under attack and to know that there's a lot of pressure for Muslims not to be who they are supposed to be. And hence, it is even more critical, it is even more crucial for the Muslims to practice more and more of what Allah and His Prophet have asked us to practice. Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him, he, one time he said, he was asked, who are the friends of Allah? And he responded by saying that the friends of Allah are those people that when they are seen, Allah is remembered. Allah is remembered. So, I would encourage all of us to begin to learn more and more about Islam and begin to practice more and more about Islam and begin to live in a community setting so you're encouraged and you're more and more motivated to practice Islam. Sheikh, thank you very much. We began with peace, we end with peace and may God Almighty, the Creator, Allah reward you for being with us. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa and thank you, everybody here, for being with us. Stick around. We're going to do another show, inshallah, in a few. And for those who are out there who want to learn more about Islam, call the number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. Pick up the verbatim word of God, the Quran. We'll see you next time. Peace be unto you. I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone I am not afraid to stand alone If a lies by my side I am not afraid to stand alone Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you We greet you with the greetings of all the messengers of God That greeting of peace and after that, we could say, what's up? How you doing? But we started with peace, and we're here in front of a live studio audience in Washington, D.C. Is everybody 
having a good halal good time? Let's do it one more time. Tuck me in. You raise the roof. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. And it's something beautiful because the more you learn about this deen, this way of life that is ordained from the creator of the heavens and earth, the more your iman, it starts to increase. And that's a blessing, one of the great blessings that Allah, the creator, has given me the ability to be here. And then we'll be able to be here together so it's double the reward. I'm getting the benefit press record, and then share it with the world. Alhamdulillah. So we can all benefit together. And today's topic, it's a nice topic. Today's topic, wherever you're watching around the world, around the globe, is that peer pressure. You got your peers, you got your group of friends, and now they're putting pressure on you. You're trying to do good, but then they're calling you to bad. You're trying to stay on the correct way, the way that is ordained from none other but the creator of the heavens and earth, and they're over here trying to influence you you to go the wrong way. So we want to get some advice on how not to succumb to that negative, bad peer pressure when we come back here live from Washington, D.C. on the Dean Show with my next guest, Shaquille. Not Shaquille O'Neal, Shay Shaquille. We'll be right back. Allah. There's only one God and Muhammad is his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah Allah, there's only one God and Jesus was his messenger Allah, la ilaha illallah I don't know why I did that, maybe it's just, maybe it's just to break the ice Assalamu alaikum Sheikh Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Peace be with you. How are you? Good. How's it going? Alhamdulillah. Praise to the creator of the heavens and earth who's given us this ability to be here. So we're going to be, because time is short, we have so much to talk about. And this way of life is about advice. Advising the good, advising people to stay away from bad. And that definition is defined, obviously not by our desires, but is defined by what God Almighty, the creator, has defined as good. And that's the ultimate good. And we want to do good because we want the reward, the reward of paradise. We want to get to paradise because this life is short. You can die at any time. So peer pressure sometimes gets people away from doing good. For instance, you know, I'll give you an example. Young man, young boy, young woman, they're at a little social event. And you know what? They get a little bit trick trapped and they go uh, to a place. And they thought it was going to be just, you know, uh, having some lunch, some dinner. Next thing you know, they're... The bong is coming up. These guys are doing it. The guy sticks around for a little bit. You know how the guys get around. The guy, go, 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 go. And next thing you know, he's chugging the bong. And now they're like, come on, Ahmed, just try it, man. Be, what? Just try it. Come on. He's like, and then he starts blushing. He's like nervous. He wants to escape, but he's got about 10 football players around him. Come on, you, why, you're acting like a girl, man. He knows he shouldn't be drinking, and he succumbs. How do we not succumb to that? Peer pressure shake. Give us some advice. Well, I think the first thing everyone should understand that peer pressure is not something new. It's existed in history and it exists today and it will exist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned peer pressure or talked about peer pressure in the Quran. He said, Inna ladina ajramu kanu mina ladina amanu yadhakun. Wa ida marrubihim itagamazun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the criminals, they used to laugh at the believers. So they'll call you, you're girly, they'll laugh at you, they'll scoff at you. Nuh Islam was building the ship, they were laughing at him. It's not raining, there's no flood, why are you building a ship, you know? We have our pants above the ankle, they say the same thing. There's no flood, why is your pants above the ankle? All right, so they're gonna, they're gonna scoff, they're gonna laugh, they're gonna make fun. But the key, the solution, the strength comes in the same surah, Allah ties the challenge of peer pressure with the akhirah. فَالْيَوْمَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that on that day, hereafter, the believers will laugh. So whoever gets the last laugh, laughs the best. So one shouldn't be afraid of peer pressure. It exists. It's part of life. But one should know how to deal with it. And the way to deal with it is to, at that moment when you're being pressured, link yourself with the akhirah. Put yourself in a completely different world in the akhirah. And that's how you get yourself out of that current situation. Should you always, you just mentioned Ahira. Now, this is the hereafter. Should you always be thinking, is it good to fantasize? Because, you know, people end up watching TV and they fantasize about the wrong things, you know? 
we had, uh, what's his name, Congressman or Senator Weiner. Uh, that's his name, Weiner, right? And, and he was fantasizing, got him in a lot of trouble. So people are fantasized. Should we, as those who believe in the one God and the uh, last and final messenger, including all the messengers of God, including Jesus, Moses, Noah, should we fantasize about the reward of paradise, getting to see the face of our Lord, getting to be in eternal bliss and happiness? And this will this encourage us to, to be on the correct way and not to succumb to temporary joys, temporary amusement, and temporary fun? We have to. Umar radiallahu anhu one day came to the house of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He saw it was basically bare, a cot and a water skin. The Prophet sallallahu had marks in his body for, for sleeping on that rough cot. Umar radiallahu anhu started to weep and said, O Messenger of Allah, the kings of Rome and Persia have all this luxury. Why don't you make dua that Allah give us something? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hearing that, got up from the cot, faced Umar radiallahu anhu and said, Afi shakkin anta ibn al-Khattab. He stood up and he addressed the situation. He said, situation. He said, Are you in doubt, O Ibn al Khattab? The opposite of certainty. Are you in doubt, O Ibn al Khattab, O son of al Khattab? Aren't you pleased that they get this dunya and we get the akhirah? So here the Prophet is teaching him how to fantasize about the akhirah. You see a situation you're not pleased with. You see a situation you wish could be better, but you have nothing at that moment to make it better fantasize about the akhirah that's amazing amazing also i mean there's the flip side to that i mean we're, we're yearning for that eternal bliss in paradise by doing good islam calls to everything good noble behavior character being good to your neighbor non-muslim or muslim and worshiping god on his terms not making up you know uh, things according to your desires so you get the reward on that day of judgment, but also are there consequences that a person who disobeys the Creator lives life according to their desires that they should think about too? The hellfire, very hot place. We don't want to be there. Should you think about this too? Definitely. And I mean, some of some of the times the youth they may say, "Well, we're young. We're gonna fool around a little bit." You know, here in America or most cities, people get serious when they're 35 or maybe 40 now, right? Uh, 30 is the new 18, I don't know what it is, right? So they get serious at a very late age. But in Islam, we get serious and mature at an earlier age. The Prophet ﷺ, when it came time to send an ambassador to Medina, he didn't send Abu Bakr, who was his right-hand man, who was the most knowledgeable companion. He sent Musa ibn Amir, a young man, to carry the message of Islam. So the youth may at times say, well, I can fool around a little bit now, and then I'll get serious later. But what they have to remember is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about the youth. He said, إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدَنَاهُمْ هُدَىٰ Allah talked about the people of the cave. They weren't, they weren't elderly people. Allah said that surely they were fitya. They were young men who believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. They went against the peer pressure to worship idols to make shirk. So much to the point, they did not compromise and they resorted and went to a cave. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi talked about seven people who will be under the shade of Allah on a day where there's no shade. He talked about the, the hotness, being hot. The sun will be brought a mile close. We will sweat as we have never sweated before. If you think this summer is hot, sweat people will sweat uh, according to their sins. Some people will sweat just below their feet. Some people will have sweat up to the shoulders. Some people will be drowned in their sweat. And one of the categories of people who will be saved from that heat and that sweat is a young man who worshiped Allah in his youth. We can't waste this precious time, this precious moments in our life, which is the youth. We gotta pass the test. The test is almost over at any time. Death is a reality. We can die today, tomorrow, and we need to take it seriously. Now let's give one more example before we go to break. You know, Fatima, Aisha, and she's uh, around some people. Possibly, you know, she thinks they're her friends, and she's changing her life. She's seeing that I need to get serious. So she's in between. She's in between the good group of friends, the bad group of friends. What advice do you have for her? You know, she's caught in a situation now or to avoid a situation where the friends invite her over and say, come on, girl, let's go hang out at this party. You know, you can come to my house and my mom will cover for us. Don't worry about it. We can go have a good time. We won't stay up too late. Everybody's going to be there. Now she, everybody's going to be there. So uh, what should she do in this situation? A couple of things. First, the first part is to be proactive. Number one, the Prophet said, a man is upon the religion of his close friend. So look to whom you take as your close friends, your buddies. So to be proactive, you've got to choose the right friends. 
You can't say, well, I'm going to you know, stay away from the haram, even though they do haram, they're doing it themselves, that's impossible. The Prophet ﷺ forbade us to drink liquor, even forbade us to sit in an arena or a place where someone else is drinking. The whole idea is that it's going to transcend, it's going to transfer to you. But that's the first thing, to be proactive, to select the right friends. Number two, if we haven't done that and we're caught in a situation, what I like to tell the youth is stop for a moment. Pause. We can pause our smart TVs these days, right? Files can be paused. Pause your moment right there. Pause. Take it to the end game. What's the end game if you take drugs? What's the end game if you drink? What's the end game if you commit adultery? Don't take it step by step because shaitan is taking you, taking, taking you step by step and he doesn't want you to see the end game. Skip those chapters. See the end game. What is the end game? You don't have to live through it to see the end game. So many people already failed. The wise person is the one who benefits and learns from other people's failures. And the not the so wise person is somebody who, despite people have failed, they went through that path, goes through that path himself, then goes to rehab, then realized it wasn't a good idea to get pregnant, then realized it wasn't a good idea to have a child without being married to her, then realizes that drugs has really screwed my life. But to look at the end game before even entering to the game. If the end game is good, pursue it. If the end game is bad, stay away. Amazing advice. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more with Sheikh Sakil here on The Dean Show. On the outside, everything looks good. You see the $100,000 cars, you see a lot of diamonds, you see a lot of females, and they think that this is, you know, this is a life. This is, this is like, you know, paradise right here on Earth. It's not anyone's job to go into someone's heart and change their heart. Your job is to tell people what the truth is. And the reality of it is, while we're sitting here, while I'm sitting here constantly paying for the disease, the cure was free. Back here on the Dean Show, giving some real advice for real situations, peer pressure. And you mentioned good companionship, good friends. You're around bad company, bad friends, you're going to end up doing some bad things. Can we give a, a real live example? For instance, I mean, if it's worth something to you, you're going to sacrifice. If you want to get that degree and you have friends calling you now to cut class, you know, to not study, be away from the study circles. You'll see, like you said, the end result. You're going to see, I'm going to get my PhD, my degree. I'm going to make good money, have a big house, big car. You're going to not hang around with certain people who are distracting you, diverting you. If we want to get to paradise, we want to earn the pleasure of the creator of the heavens and earth, it's the same thing here, isn't it? Good companionship, be away from people who are drinking, doing drugs, not like thinking like, oh, we're like so pious and right, calling them to this that's better than that because obviously the Creator prohibited these things because they're bad for us. So is this a way, an example, maybe you give something else so people can really just can hit home? Well, basically, I think that's a very good uh, point. A lot of people go with the flow, go with the wind, succumb to peer pressure simply because of that satanic thought, I'll be deprived. I'm going to miss out. I'm going to lose out. But you know what? When you're a Muslim, you're a believer, it's a win-win situation always. Always. And the Prophet generally described it that the affair of the believer is always good. Right? If something good happens to him, he's happy. If something bad happens to him, he's patient and his sins are removed. So he's, it's always a win-win situation. So uh, in, in this situation, what he should do and look at the thing that he's going to leave, but don't think it's a loss because it's actually an investment and a gain because the Prophet ﷺ said, Man taraka shayan lillah, khayran min. Whoever leaves anything for the sake of Allah, Allah will replace it. There's no loss. Allah will replace it, not with something equal to it. Allah will replace it with something better than it. So if you lose, you let go of that haram relationship, you're going to get a better one. If you let go of that, oh, well, I can't get a high. I'm not going to, I want to feel this high from drugs. Allah's going to give you something that's more joyful, more beneficial. It could be in this life or it could be in the afterlife. Sure, alhamdulillah. Great advice. Now, we're going to take some questions from our live audience. Does anybody have a question that's relevant to the topic here that they'd like to ask Sheikh O'Neill? Young brother here. O'Neill? Sheikh. You say Sheikh O'Neill. <laughs> Just say Sha for real. Shake Shaquille for real. real. Shake for real. Now, Shaquille for real. Shaquille for real. Yeah. We, we have, do we have, we have our VIP guest, brother Sammy, Sam. 
Does, do we have any other not yet Muslims here that would like, because as I said, everyone has the potential to submit to God, the same God that Jesus submitted to, that Moses submitted to. That's the God, the God that created you and everything in this universe. That is what a Muslim is, one who submits to God. So is there any... Let's, let's not give Sam precedence. What? Let's give Sam precedence. Where's Sam? Is there any other not yet Muslims? Sam, you want to ask another question? Go ahead, brother. You're our VIP guest. Ask. Ask away. Uh, well, today, um, during one of the lectures, I, my, my friend Hans, who brought me here, um, let me know that Christianity and Islam kind of share the same prophets. I did not know that at all. So I kind of want to know, um, what, how do you guys feel about Jesus Christ? Like, when Chris, I'm a Christian, so when I say, like, he's the son of God, how, how would you respond to that? Go ahead, Shay. Take it away. Well, Good question. Thank you. Let me just, uh, in a nutshell, tell you that as Muslims, we believe in all the prophets. The day of judgment, when the Jews will be questioned, if you believe in Jesus Christ, their answer will be no. On the day of judgment, when the Christians will be questioned, do you believe in the prophet Muhammad, وسلم, their answer will be I've got a little Aqidah issue here. Let's, let's repeat that. Let's repeat that again. Uh, on the day of judgment, when the Christians will be questioned, do you believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Their answer will be no. On the day of judgment, when the Muslims will be questioned, do you believe in Moses? Our answer will be yes. Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Do you believe in Muhammad? Alayhi salatu wa salam So, Islam is the full package. Why would you settle for anything less? Islam is the only religion in the world that does, that does not deny a single prophet or messenger of God Almighty. Having said that, what do we believe about Jesus Christ? We believe he was the Christ, he was the Messiah, he's a prophet of God, he's a messenger of God. He is not God because he was born from a human being, Mary. Imagine, imagine he's in the belly of Mary being born. The umbilical cord has to be cut off. That's God there? That can't be God. Or imagine that being son of the Son of God. If we say Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then he has to be divine. Because the son of a human is a human. The cub of a lion is an animal. If we say the Son of God, if someone's the Son of God, then the Son has to be divine, has to be God. And if you do that, then you have two gods, not one. And if we say, no, the Son of God is not God, then what do you mean by Son of God? If you say he's a human being, then why do you call him a Son of God? Because everyone else is a human being. Right? So what does that title mean? So in Islam, we say it causes a lot of confusion. So what we say is Jesus Christ is not divine. Human beings are not to be worshipped. Creation is not to be worshipped. But the creator of creation is to be worshipped. Now I have a question for you, Sam. Why aren't you Muslim? I don't know. <laughs> Let's find out. Do you believe in one God or two gods? One God. How about three gods? It sounds like a little more. No, just one God. Only one? Yes. Is, G can, is Jesus God? Do you believe Jesus is God? Yes. Do you believe Jesus is God? Yeah. Here's a quick question for you. Who came to the earth? God the Father or God. Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ, God the Son. Je okay, so you said Jesus is God. Then when I asked you who came to the earth, to the earth God or Jesus, you said Jesus. How many gods is that? That would make two. God, that would be two. <laughs> So let's repeat the question. How many gods do you believe in? I feel like I'm being put in a tight spot here. No, I don't be tight. Just tell the guy next to you to move over a little bit. Oh, come on. Okay. So in other words, that's why we don't say he's God, because you have two gods, and you can't get around that. Right? I see. What's the first commandment? Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that shall have no other god before. What? Thou shalt have, shall have no other God before me. No other God except the uh, Creator, yes. right? Yes. Only one. So whenever, my dear friend, whenever the equation is more than one, there's something wrong. So if you say Jesus is God, the equation is more than? One. One. It's a problem. Right? So is Jesus God? I still believe Jesus is God. Okay. So how many gods do you believe in then? Technically, two. Okay, good. No, I, I appreciate you being honest. A lot of people will say one, right? But 
Good, your math is good. You took calculus? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's showing. So, uh, so there's two. So what I want you to do today is think about that technical problem. And there's no solution in the world except Islam. You know why I say that? You know why I say that? No. This is what I, I want you to leave with tonight. Name me a religion on the face of this earth that does two things. Believes in Jesus Christ and believes in one God. Name me those religions. Which religion believes in Jesus Christ and only one God? No technical problems. Islam. Huh? Islam. Islam. Think right. about that. Okay? Just think about that. Thank you. Th thank you again, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank we're going to take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show Live in Washington, D.C. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, I seek refuge with Allah, the Lord of mankind, the King of mankind, the God of mankind. From the evil of the whisperer Who whispers evil in the hearts of men Who withdraws from his whispering in one's heart After one remembers Allah Who whispers in the hearts of mankind Of jinn and men I seek refuge with Allah I seek refuge with Allah. Have mercy on us, 